When the lights go down in cities across North America, another world is revealed. An underworld populated by shady characters that live alongside us but exist in the margins. We think of them as little garbage cans. We think we know them. There's many things about raccoon behavior that we just don't understand. What we know is just the tip of the iceberg. With special cameras, we enter the hidden, intimate world of a young raccoon family to see how this raccoon mother's careful teaching transforms her helpless kits into self-reliant scavengers, able to defy the dangers of big city life. Urban raccoon populations are exploding, and city life is changing raccoons in some remarkable ways. Nature is made possible in part by Canon. Take your inspiration from nature. Leave it untouched by your presence. Capture its image and preserve it forever. Canon. Living and working together to appreciate today and care for tomorrow. Additional funding provided by the Lillian Goldman Charitable Trust. The Philemon M. D'Agostino Foundation. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. We were very close to him. We're going to loop back around again and see if uh, maybe he's not poking his head out in between some houses. Stan Garrett is a wildlife biologist and one of the world's foremost experts on raccoon behavior. He's been tracking these animals for over 25 years, and they never cease to amaze him. One of the things that's become very clear is they have this wide repertoire that allows them to you know, be so successful that it also makes it a challenge for us to try and capture all of that and understand it. So in other words, you and I might study raccoons for a whole year, and we may see four or five types of behavior. That may not get us anywhere to understanding what raccoons are doing in another part of the state or just across the town or in another person's yard. Their behavior is still really a mystery to us. The one thing that raccoons need that they require that they can't escape from is water. Originally, raccoons lived in the tropics where they could be found foraging along riverbanks. Over time, they moved north up the continent, successfully adapting to new territories and expanding their diet. Traditionally, they live in tree cavities or burrows, emerging at dusk to hunt frogs and crustaceans while keeping an eye out for predators such as coyotes and foxes. Barns have aided their northern migration offering refuge from cold northern winters. Now, raccoons have been found as far north as Alaska. As raccoons spread across North America, many moved into cities. And not just any city, but big cities like Chicago, New York, and Toronto, the raccoon capital of the world. Raccoons thrive alongside us in a parallel world, which our special night vision cameras will reveal for the first time. In terms of behavior, country and city raccoons have adapted into two very different creatures. Where shy, reclusive country raccoons retreat from urban sprawl, bold city raccoons amble towards it. There are now 50 times more raccoons living in Toronto than in the same area in the surrounding countryside. So the question is, are we encroaching on raccoon territory or are they encroaching on us?
Cities are new environments for any wild species. No wild species evolved to live in cities. The only animals that live in cities are the ones that are extremely flexible and able to take advantage of those novel environments. I think raccoons are a perfect match for cities. Unlike other animals like foxes and coyotes that live on the edges of cities, raccoons have the ability to come into the city because they have those great hands. They can open up doors, they can get into attics, they can get into small spaces. In cities around the world, wherever they've been introduced, they do really, really well. There's a number of different traits that raccoons have that enables them to be readily adapted to, or almost pre-adapted to, the urban environment. In comparison to, say, other carnivores like wolves or bears, they're much, much smaller in body size, so they can actually fit into an urban environment a lot easier. In addition to that, they're omnivorous. They can eat anything. And the same thing for us. We can eat anything. It makes us able to rule the world because we can find food anywhere. More than almost any other mammal, raccoons will quickly become dumpster divers. They will key in on trash cans or garbage bags then they're going to spend a lot of their time simply looking for those kinds of items. It's going to change um, their behavior. And it's going to change their whole physiology. And city life may even be changing the way they think. There's a commonly held belief that changes in the behavior of a species as it's evolving then drive further changes in the brain. It's quite possible that moving into the urban environments is actually creating technically smarter raccoons. Life in the city could be sending raccoons down a new evolutionary path. It could have dramatic impacts on the species because it is such a change, moving from the system that they evolved under to this completely artificial system. I'm not sure what the ultimate outcome is going to be. It is an experiment, an unplanned experiment that's going on right now. Scientists know very little about how raccoons survive in a bustling city. Two Canadian biologists are trying to unravel this mystery. Marc Dupuis des Ormeaux and Suzanne MacDonald are embarking on a groundbreaking new study that will track the precise movements, habits, and predilections of raccoons in one of North America's busiest cities, Toronto. Well, all the traps are for us to find out the secret lives of raccoons so that we can figure out what are they doing at night. The traps are to catch the raccoons, so then we can put a radio collar on them so that we can find out where they go. Well, there's been all kinds of studies where people get a GPS marking every three hours or five hours, but we're going to get some very, very fine uh, data. And that's something that hasn't been done before. Their plan is to trap and put radio collars on raccoons in three different neighborhoods spread across the city. The collars will register a GPS location every five to 15 minutes and give the scientists a roadmap to raccoon travels. 50 times more detailed than any data gathered to date. Well, that works. Most people think they know what happens to raccoons because they're in their backyard. But what happens when they're not in the backyard? So where do they go? Where do they sleep? Where do they find water? What's their territory size like? There's all sorts of questions and nobody knows what the answers are. A specially trained vet is called in to sedate the raccoons. So she's a girl, and uh, you see she's a mum. And she's nicely relaxed there. Good girl. Stick her in the, uh, yeah. With their nimble and persistent hands, raccoons can undo almost anything scientists put on them. There you go, Mark, a raccoon for you. So I don't know, on the age, she's not. Uh, uh, ancient animal, but uh, a lot of the raccoons have really worn teeth uh, once they've been around for a few years and they've been eating all sorts of rubbish. After months of brainstorming, the team has designed what it hopes is a raccoon proof collar. I'd have too loose, I'd just pull it right off. It's a very nice collar, you look lovely. You look lovely, little one. These collars are cutting edge. They house a mini hard drive that stores a wealth of data. 
and they also transmit a VHF signal that allows Mark to track the raccoons in the city and download the data as his study progresses. And I suggest Suzanne stays behind just to keep dogs and people away, and we go and uh, find somebody else. In total, five raccoons have been collared for this test study. Let's have a look what you got here. You go? No, it's a girl. Five foot soldiers are set forth to give scientists a guided tour into their daily lives. And give us a window into a world that's long been hidden from view. The newly released mom quickly returns to her kits. At three weeks old, they're moving beyond the newborn stage as their eyes and ears open to the world for the first time. Raccoon mothers raise their kits alone, so they prefer natal dens high up in the trees, far from threats, including male raccoons who may prey on the young. Any of the animals that spend time with their mom through their development are generally thought of as being smarter than other animals. Raccoons stay with their moms sometimes throughout an entire year, so they do have that time to grow and it's a time for their brain to develop as well. Raccoons develop quickly and are able to adapt to a variety of different landscapes. Just off the coast of Nanaimo, British Columbia, lies Newcastle Island, a provincial park that's home to a unique community of sailors, campers, and raccoons. Raccoons would have to be placed right up there as one of the most adaptable animals on the planet. That's why they're so successful at quickly adjusting to new and novel environments. Raccoons have a habit of using their front feet in terms of foraging. In fact, they have a very strong sense of touch. Part of that is actually an adaptation for searching for food under muddy water. It's a myth that raccoons always wash their food. Water softens dense nerve meshes in the callous layer of skin on their front feet making them up to five times more sensitive. So they act almost like taste buds, sending a rush of information to their brains, allowing them to see the world with their feet, freeing up their eyes to look for other things, like predators or more food. Everyone knows that they use their front feet in ways that almost no other mammals do. And it's not a common thing to have this kind of sense of touch in the animal kingdom. Outside of primates, it's hard to find any other examples. The raccoons on this island demonstrate what scientists have long believed, that there's a strong link between an animal's ability to manipulate objects and its intelligence. The 14 campsites on the island come with lock boxes for provisions. And if campers fail to use them, the raccoons here will teach them to be smarter. always looking for new challenges. If they think that there's a reward and to a raccoon, there's always the possibility of a reward. They're going to continue trying to solve a problem, trying to overcome a certain challenge.
Back in Toronto, the kids are six weeks old and big enough to start exploring. They're like toddlers taking their first steps, but their first steps are 60 feet up in the air on a precarious surface. Their vigilant mom rarely lets her kits out of sight. Over the next year, there will hardly be a moment when she's not teaching, feeding, or protecting her young. And as every mother knows, this can be exhausting. This play is training the kids for their biggest challenge yet. Their mom gathers them up to leave the security of their natal den and descend 60 feet head first into the darkness for their first touch on solid ground. Well, it's such a peculiar thing. We never know what tomorrow brings. And I never knew love moves at such a frantic pace. Well, I'm head over heels for you. Feel like I've got the stomach flu. And if this is heaven, heaven is a scary place. 